Hey friends, so the stock market has been dropping quite a bit because the inflation data, the CPI data, came in higher than expected. What that means is the Fed, the Federal Reserve, is less likely to cut rates as aggressively in the near term until inflation gets under control. What that means for dividend stock investors like myself is stocks are trending down. And that's great because as stocks trend down, starting dividend yields go up. Meaning as I deploy money, I can get more value, more immediate cash flow for my dollars invested. And so whenever the stock market corrects and I see value in my favorite core quality dividend stocks, I like to buy more. There are actually two stocks that I bought just this week that I want to share with you today. They are very different. One of them offers immediate higher yield. One of them offers a lower starting dividend yield, but it's growing the dividend very, very quickly. I want to explain these two stocks through an analogy. Right now, we are in springtime. I'm seeing a lot of flowers blooming outside, a lot of trees growing even purchasing some more trees and flowers to make the property where we live even more beautiful. There's really two types of trees that can be purchased, and it's so interesting. I'm going to share this on the screen with you right now. I used my whiteboard to um, draw out this analogy before the video, and I hope you like this analogy. You'll see in scenario one, and scenario two, for that matter, that I have $500 to spend. I'm just assuming $500 because I actually just bought two trees for $500. And so what's so interesting with $500 is you could go to your gardening center, you could buy trees and plants, and you could spend that money in different ways. Scenario one is the first scenario, obviously, and it shows me buying two trees with the $500. You'll see both of those trees, they're more mature, they're larger. Boy, they have a lot of fruit on those trees. There's a lot of harvest from those trees immediately from day one. They're mature trees. That's why the $500 gets fewer trees. It just gets two because these are very large trees that already bear a lot of fruit. But Worth noting, these trees aren't growing quite as rapidly anymore because they're already mature. There's limited future growth. They offer a lot of fruit right now. Obviously, in my analogy, fruit on these trees are the dividends. And so this is an example of a current yield situation. The example in the video today that I'm going to go into in a few minutes is Pfizer. That's the stock that I added to on Monday because the starting dividend yield is upwards of 6% and it's a qualified dividend yield, which means it's taxed as long-term capital gains, which is wonderful. And so I'm going to go back to my analogy, as you can see on the screen in front of you right now. Pfizer, I would say it's more of a mature company, steady eddy, slow growth. I see some value there. I'm going to get to that in a minute. So there may be some share price appreciation, but more or less, even the history tells us the dividend is growing only by about 3% per year. It's a mature tree with a lot of fruit to bear, but it's not growing quickly. Why would an investor want to even go with scenario one? Well, it's someone that wants an immediate large tree. They want an immediate yield with a lot of harvest. They understand that in the future, the harvest may not grow very much, but that investor wants to capture that harvest right now. I want to go into scenario two, which is on the right-hand side of the screen. I could have gone to the gardening center and purchased with that same $500 a multitude of smaller trees or bushes. And you can see there I show only five of them, but I have a dot, dot, dot to illustrate that that 500, it could buy even more than that than that is shown. And so you can see on the screen in this illustration that there are some fruit on these um, small bushes, but it's not much. Each bush has maybe one or two fruit. That's it. There's a, not a lot of harvest right now, but these trees, these bushes, they are very small and they are growing rapidly. There's lots of future growth. And worth noting, eventually, the annual fruit that is harvested from these smaller trees, it could surpass those two large trees in scenario one, but that would likely take decades. 
This example obviously is best illustrated through Starbucks, my number one position in my dividend stock portfolio. I bought more Starbucks today. And I made a little bit of a larger trade because I not only infused net new capital into the portfolio for the trade, but I selectively reinvested one of my large dividends that I just received from Philip Morris, ticker PM. So it was a nice size trade, and I'm gonna share that with you in a minute. My patrons, by the way, they already know about this trade. I'll link to that in the um, pinned comment below if you wanna check out my Patreon. But as I go back to the illustration, as you can see on the screen here, Starbucks is interesting. It's a company that offers dividend yield right now, so there are fruit on the trees, but the uh, trees, they're smaller. They're going to take more time to grow. It's going to take more time to achieve a large harvest, but eventually it's amazing because each of these trees will equal in size those in scenario one, but there's more trees. So eventually I'm going to get a much larger harvest for the same amount of money invested, but it takes a long time for that yield on cost to play out. Now, thankfully with Starbucks, because they're increasing the dividend each year so aggressively, in fact, over the last five years, they've increased the dividend by 9.63% per year on average, which is triple the amount that Pfizer is doing. Obviously at that rate of growth, that harvest from those um, trees, those examples in scenario two could equal or surpass scenario one quite quickly. And so I hope you liked my analogy today because as dividend investors, what we're really doing all the time is we're either buying trees, we're planting seeds, we're building a crop that can be harvested at a later date. But we're not only uh, building something that's a one-time harvest, it can be harvested quarterly annually, semi-annually, depending on what the dividend payout schedule is. And it's so fun to be in this game because maybe the value of these trees over time fluctuates. Maybe uh, when it's uh, peak season at the garden center, they can extract a little more money for each tree. Maybe when it's end of season and the trees aren't looking so good at the garden center and they just need to clear their inventory before the winter hits, they run a sale. And so it's just like the stock market. The value of the underlying asset goes up and down over time, but the harvest it just keeps growing the dividends as long as the investor purchases the highest quality dividend stocks. So I want to quickly go into my two stocks that I purchased this week. First though, if you're enjoying the video so far, please go ahead and click the like button. It means the world to me. And so check it out on the screen. The first stock is Pfizer. I don't need to spend too much time on this. I've done standalone videos here on my channel. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to check out the video archive. I have a lot of standalone videos on both Starbucks and Pfizer, but Needless to say, I'm attracted to Pfizer right now because it is trading at a PE of 12, next year a forward PE of 9.68, and so it's probably got some capital appreciation there. It's a mature tree, but you know what? It's probably going to continue to um, grow a little bit these next few years as it gets back to its fair value. But what really attracts me, as you can see highlighted on the screen, is that 6.29% yield. And the fact that it's still growing 3% per year, it's not much, but you know what? That's in line with what I've come to see oftentimes in the real estate market. I work in commercial real estate. A lot of leases that are in place oftentimes have a annual growth target in terms of rent baked into those leases. And oftentimes it is in that 3% range. And so the way I look at uh, Pfizer is I'm kind of getting an asset like a commercial real estate property, but there's no overhead. I don't have to do anything. It manages itself. And there's some built-in gains in terms of... Um, passive income growing over time per year, just like a lot of commercial real estate leases read. And so it's really exciting. I'll tell you, this is just a side tangent, but I got back from vacation. When I got back, um, and I'll link in the pinned comment to my last two videos, which I filmed while on vacation in Florida, I got really pumped up and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna start doing the videos more frequently and um, it's gonna be really fun, really exciting. Thankfully, this video isn't too 
um, far along since my last video, but I wanted to get this video filmed like literally a week ago, but life got in the way, work got in the way, it's been busy, and so it's um, just, uh, please, if you appreciate the videos, go ahead and write a comment below. I love to hear from you in the comments. I um, really wish I was doing the videos more frequently, and that is my goal, but it has um, just been quite busy uh, since I've been back from vacation. But it's a good reminder. Vacation is a reminder of what that dividend dream lifestyle will look like. And now I'm back in the thick of it. I'm working, thankfully, not quite as um, many hours as before vacation, but it is uh, still a lot of workload. And um, I'm reminded from my vacation why I am doing what I'm doing with dividend stocks. I invest in the dividend stocks because they will bear fruit increasingly each year over time and eventually I can use that to cover all living expenses and live that vacation dream uh, fat fire lifestyle um, as much as I want uh, throughout the year. And so good stuff. All right, let's talk about Starbucks. My favorite stock, my number one dividend stock, as you can see on the screen, this is fascinating. So Starbucks is now down a staggering 25% from its 52-week high. And the 52-week high of 115, honestly, in my opinion, was... Um, not even overvalued. I think it's probably fairly valued, if not still undervalued at that level. Um, I'm probably looking at this very differently from other analysts, uh, but uh, from my perspective, at least, eventually I'm looking at Starbucks as a $200 uh, per share stock. It may take a while to get there, but I see a compelling case for the business to reach that valuation as their plans continue to unfold, not only in the United States, but uh, in China and globally as well. Anyway, now it's at $86. So Pfizer's down 36% from the 52 week high. We know why that's the case. Their revenue, their earnings have dried up um, due to slowing uh, sales of vaccines. But we know in Starbucks that this business generally is doing quite well. It's growing quite well, yet it's down a staggering 25%. And so that is something that really caught my attention. Based on the forward EPS estimates, uh, this year the forward PE is a 21, next year an 18. This is about as low as I've seen Starbucks. Now these PEs may seem high, but keep in mind this company is growing very quickly year over year. And it'll be real interesting to see their earnings reports uh, soon, and uh, a possible dividend increase a little bit later this year. Now, the starting yield is a 2.65%. So it's kind of like I take the $500 at the gardening store and I buy a bunch of bushes that are not bearing a lot of fruit right now. But eventually, I know because of that staggering compound annual average growth rate of 9.63% per year on average, and the fact that the payout ratio is pretty low at 56%, so there's room to increase the dividend, that over time, those trees will grow, they will bear more fruit, and there could be a time where it surpasses the same money invested in Starbucks right now, surpasses the same money invested in Pfizer in terms of yield, in terms of cash flow. It's just going to be a function of time. And the market cap is a $97 billion, which I think uh, just from a market cap perspective is undervalued. Now, it's interesting. Why did I buy both stocks? Well, part of me comes back from vacation to a lot of work and wishes I could go back to Disney. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. In many ways, uh, Disney World, it's better than the real world um, in, in so many ways. It's fun to be there. It's kind of like being in another world, another place. All of your cares uh, kind of, uh, you're living carefree. Um, and so, Part of me thinks, okay, I need to buy stocks like Pfizer because I can generate yield right now. I can do it right now and uh, get to fire quicker. Get more cash flow just to, and I'm not looking at fire as an all or nothing thing these days. I'm just looking at it as a gray area. I'm already living semi-fire. It's kind of the more cash flow I have coming, the more I can throttle down the work, the more balance I have, the less stress I have. It's all good. And so part of me wants to just take that money and go buy the bigger trees that are bearing a lot of fruit that are not growing very quickly. But part of me also realizes, look, I'm still in my early 40s, mid 40s. I have many years ahead. And I know from personal experience, I'll give you a, a, a tweet that I just shared yesterday. I'll, um, I'll show it on the screen right now. 
This one's about Procter & Gamble. They just increased the dividend by a staggering 7%. Who would have thought? I would have guessed they'd do a 3% increase, but no, they did 7%. Love p and I've been in that company for a very long time. My first tranche, simple uh, dividend yield on cost, not including reinvested dividends, is now at a 6.6%. So it's even higher than Pfizer. And that doesn't even include, or it's higher than the starting yield on Pfizer right now. Uh, because I've been holding a long time and uh, just been letting the compounding do its magic. And I'm not even including reinvested dividends. With reinvested dividends, that true dividend yield on cost would be a lot higher than the 6.6% simple yield on cost. And I've talked about that in a lot of my videos, especially my earlier videos, um, that the difference between simple yield on cost and true with fully uh, dividends reinvested yield on cost. And so part of me sees these things like um, Procter & Gamble. And I start thinking also, hey, it's a springtime. The sun's coming out. I've got some time ahead. I feel a lot of energy in some ways. In some ways, I don't feel the energy. Others, I do. Um, but I'm like, hey, I don't want to give up on my core strategy. I don't want to give up on stocks like uh, Starbucks. And it's interesting. Starbucks, I think it's about 11% of my portfolio right now. And I wouldn't mind doubling it. I'd be fine doubling my position from here. I believe in the company. I have conviction in the company. And so, hey, I want to add more to that one because I do believe their next dividend increase will be somewhere probably between 7 and 10%. And I believe they'll keep doing that for the next few years at least here. And I could see the yield on cost getting up there over time. And so I'm willing to do a little bit of a hybrid approach where I'm buying the current yielders and the future um, yielders as well, the dividend growth stocks like Starbucks. But I'd love to know what you're doing this week. There's so many stocks uh, going on sale now. It's wonderful to see this higher inflation data because it gives investors like myself with a long-term perspective an opportunity to buy quality companies at uh, great prices. And so share in the comments below if you're buying stocks. I shared two of the ones I bought this week um, today. I'd love to know what you are buying as well. And if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to click the like button. It means the world to me. I'm so excited to be here, everyone. I hope my next video is going to be um, not more than a week from now. That's my goal. I am back into it. I missed you all. In terms of a full disclosure, I own the stocks mentioned today. I am long Starbucks, ticker SBUX. I am long Pfizer, PFE. I am also long um, Procter & Gamble, ticker PG. My kids are long Disney, ticker DIS. I'm also long Philip Morris, ticker PM as well, with that huge thug life dividend uh, coming through. Uh, in terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video, it's not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video, it's just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market, please consult your licensed financial advisor first. I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. It's possible to lose money in the market. I'm just speaking to my personal situation only. I have additional disclosures and disclaimers in the uh, description, video description below, as I always do. All right, everyone, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next dividend stock investing video.